Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is a week of July 5th, 2021. This week we get four topics and one of them is pretty long and we're bringing on a guest to give you more information on this. But the first story is going to be Hotel is phasing out the Evo 1. So we'll talk about when those dates are going to be. We'll talk about a smartphone company that is trying to put tiny little smart drones inside of their phones. It's kind of an interesting concept. The big story is somebody got their drone shot at and so we'll talk about what happened and then also we'll give you some tips on how to deal with this when it happens to you. And then the last thing is going to be a, um, a survey from Hotel that I want you guys to go ahead and fill out because uh, well yeah, we'll talk about why. So let's get to it. First thing this week is Hotel announced the end of life for the Evo 1. Now, not today, not just yet, but they're saying as of December 31st, 2021, the Evo 1 and the accessories will enter what's called end of availability, which means that uh, you won't be able to uh, get them. They won't be produced anymore, essentially. You'll be able to get them if there's supply, but that's pretty much as long as supplies last, right, as they say. And then in June of 2022, we'll see the end of support for the Evo 1. Uh, this doesn't really change anything for the Evo 2. I know we've talked about the Evo 2, the V1 and the V2 and all of this, but uh, but yeah, essentially, if you have an Evo 1, you know that it's uh, it's coming to an end eventually. Next thing this week is the Vivo smartphone drone, and this is a patent that was filed by Vivo. And um, essentially, what it is, it's just uh, inside of your phone. You would have a tiny little drone uh, that has two cameras on it. It has three infrared sensors and eventually would, I guess, take selfie pictures of you or you can send it up and, and just fly. I find the concept very interesting. It's, it would be definitely a micro drone. Uh, any wind would basically just pick it up and transfer it to wherever uh, the wind is going to go. So uh, I don't know if it's a good idea. Uh, I don't know that I want to see a bazillion tiny little drones flying around uh, wherever I go. Uh, I love drones, but you know, this is, uh, this is kind of an interesting concept. Uh, that would also create a lot of wasted space inside of the phone. So who knows? This is a concept kind of, I mean, it's a patent. It's not something that's being produced at the moment, but let me know what you think in the comments. Something that happened this week, uh, that was actually yesterday uh, at the time I'm recording this, uh, a man in Ohio uh, was uh, flying around with his drone and then the drone got shot at. And you know, we report on these things and I try to report on as many of those as I can. And, and maybe you guys find this boring eventually, but I want to bring the awareness to the fact that this happens and and you know we've we've been critical i've been very critical of the nprm for remote id and i've been critical of the final ruling when it came out where your location is going to be provided to the general public the location of the pilot and the location of the drone and unfortunately i think we're going to lead to more of these encounters so this guy was flying his uh, DJI Phantom 4. You can see actually in the interview, he, he knows what he's doing because he had a nice little pre-flight checklist that he filled out, that he followed, um, and then went up and, and fly to take pictures of his brother's uh, brother-in-law's mother house that was on the lake uh, to provide the picture as a gift. And then he heard gunshots not too far from where he was, and then he looked and found, took a picture of the person with a gun pointed at the at the drone and and, uh, and shooting at it and he said he shot like seven or eight rounds and then he was able to get away from it without getting shot at and then landed and then promptly after this the person came over to confront them him and his brother-in-law they got into altercation and then eventually they were able to flee but um, the person was brandishing a handgun on them so We've said this, I've said this before, and, 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 and I'm making a, a grim prediction that somebody eventually is gonna get shot and more than likely killed because the location, because they were flying a drone. That's the bottom line. And so um, there are several things, and I wanna go kind of over the list of what you should be doing if this happens to you. And instead of giving you the list, I'm actually wanna bring in Vic Moss from the Drone Service Provider Alliance because Vic has been involved and you've seen Vic on our show before and, and if you're a student, you've you've uh, you've dealt with Vic in the past in, in, in some comments maybe on our Facebook group. But anyway, I'm bringing Vic because I want Vic to give us the things that need to be done if you get into this situation. So Vic, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, I appreciate it. So. This seems to happen quite a bit, unfortunately, around the country. And, and I know you and I have had these discussions offline, online, and in other meetings. What do you recommend people do when they're confronted with this kind of situation where either their drone was shot at completely or somebody's trying to shoot them? 
shoot the drone, hopefully not them, but shoot the drone, what, what do you recommend people do? Well, you've got, you've got the legal remedies uh, and then you've got the safety remedies, obviously. Um, first, and for, the first thing you've got to do is just remove yourself from the situation as fast as possible. Um, and I think that probably goes without saying, but um, unless you're confronted in a situation like that, you may not have really thought about what to do. So make yourself safe. Um, if the person's in the vicinity, I mean, sacrifice the drone if you feel danger. I mean, it, it, it just just leave. Um, try to bring the drone home, obviously. Um, but there are certain things you can do and must do. First and foremost, obviously, is um, you reach out to your local police department. Uh, not only is there issues with the actual, you know, federal issues with firing on, a, on an aircraft, because we are aircraft, there's local issues. Um, and the local issues are going to be the one that start the ball rolling. So reach out to reach out to the uh, um, police department, uh, call 911 if it warrants it. And if there's weapons involved, call 911 and let them know that there are weapons involved, because that will that will definitely elevate, um, elevate the call status. Absolutely. And, and you say local issues, um, mm -hmm. you know, this could be somebody discharging a firearm within city limits, right? Th those kind of issues that what you're referring mm -hmm. to? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, criminal mischief, uh, you know, uh, reckless endangerment, assault, attempted murder. I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of really nasty things that can be that can be piled on as far as the uh, local police departments go. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, but then the next step is where you want to get federal involvement. And and actually, I've talked with uh, talked with my LEAP officer. LEAP is the uh, Law Enforcement Assistance Program. That's the FAA's uh, um, law enforcement liaison. They're the ones that deal with uh, police departments and things like that. Uh, so they're the ones that the law enforcement, the person who overtakes your report, you need to make sure they understand that they then need to forward all this information to the LEAP officer that's in charge of that particular area. Uh, that's not that hard to find. You can uh, reach out to uashelp at faa.gov and they'll tell you uh, where, to, where to reach uh, or how to reach your um, LEAP officer. Or you can actually get a LEAP card uh, downloaded off the FAA website and that will have a, a number of your particular region. Your Each state uh, has their own region. So um, that's the best way to do it and make sure that the person taking the police report understands that this needs to be elevated to the federal level. Yeah. And so the, 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 the I know the FBI eventually sometimes get involved. They should be getting mm -hmm. involved with this. That should happens be. with the FAA. Basically, you don't contact the FBI. The FAA really does that. No, no. I mean, you can, um, but it's, it's better to let the, the channels work. Um, because if you just contact the FBI, they're going to have no, they don't know what's going on with the job or with the uh, with the uh, incident or anything like that. So let the LEAP officers do their job, the LEAP agents. They're, they're great people. Um, they really want to help get things set. Uh, but you can also go ahead and reach out to FISDO, you know, your Flight Standards District Office. You can go ahead and do that as well if you feel like you need to. But um, it's the job of the LEAP then to tell FISDO that they need to start the investigation and or uh, bump it up to the federal level. Um, the issue right now is these types of incidents aren't a high priority for the FBI, unfortunately. Yep, and, and we've seen them happen. And it, I don't think I mentioned it in the story earlier, but it is against federal regulation to shoot at an aircraft, to destroy an mm -hmm. aircraft. Uh, there's a whole lot of implications in here from the U.S. code. And so people right. need to be aware of this. Uh, also, I know you've been keeping track with the Drone Service Provider Alliance of all the different um, issues that have been happening with people getting shot at. So uh, how can people get a hold of you? And I know you, you've been helping Zach, who was the story that we yeah. just mentioned. Uh, how can people get a hold of you and and get some uh, some help there? Uh, easiest way there, uh, obviously, is just email. And that's Vic V I C at dspalliance.org, um, and we can we can help point you in the right direction. Um, we're also in the process. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while, uh, Kenji and myself um, and Scott, and we wanted to put together this checklist. I mean, the 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 agriculture. Pilots Association has a checklist about what to do when you get shot down or shot at. Um, if you get shot down, that's that's a whole other ball of wax. But um, we thought, you know what, we we were, one of these days, you know, the the ever popular one of these days, we need to put together a checklist for the UAS. And when I was talking with Kenji about about what happened to Zach, um, 
it's like, okay, enough, enough of this one of these days. So we went ahead and put it together um, and, you know, do things like one, obviously get out of the area, get your drone, get out, call the cops. Um, another really good thing is as soon as you're able, write down everything that happened as well as you can remember it, including any witnesses, uh, get the same thing from them and just make sure you compile everything and keep a really good records and you know, reach out to the DA. If you don't feel like um, they're, working as diligently as you'd like them to be. Uh, the incident here in Colorado, which I think we talked about, um, that particular pilot is uh, is working with the DA to um, bump the charges up from criminal mischief, which is what the guy was charged with who beat up the pilot here in Colorado. Good, good. I, I, I hope that at one point there's going to be an example. You know, I've mentioned earlier in the video that uh, with remote idea around the corner, one of the mm -hmm. big, big criticism that, that we had and that you have, I, I know, is uh, the location of the pilot being available to the public. Mm -hmm. So not not a great thing. Um, the uh, Maybe maybe there needs to be a map of uh, where people are getting shot at uh, their drones, where drones went down because of people shooting at them. You know, like uh, DJI has this map of, uh, <laughs> of of drones for good. Maybe I, uh -huh, I, mean, I hate to put the negative spin on, on this stuff, right. but yeah, right. it needs to be visible, I think. Um, I, I don't see it quite as that widespread of a problem yet, and I hopefully it won't. Uh, but yeah, you never know. I mean, I'm not sure what, what we do with the information, not fly there. I don't know. Um, but there, there are steps you can take as a, as, a, as a drone operator, too. So, you know, I for instance, here in Colorado, it's legal to carry bear spray because we have bears. Um, I actually carry bear gel if I feel the need. Uh, not very often, often that I do feel the need. Um, and it's usually urban areas. Um, or actually up in the mountains too, I may carry it because literally there are bears in the mountains around here. Um, and the other thing to do is uh, is wear a body cam or GoPro or um, what's the Instago or whatever it's called, that little Instago 360. I know people who just put one of those in their pocket, wear it on a lanyard. Um, I have a body camera that I clip to a uh, to a shirt uh, or I can wear in a harness if, if you feel like there's going to be a need for that. Yeah. That'll help keep you safe as well. I saw your interview last night on uh, Ken, mm -hmm. the original Dobo, and I, I, uh -huh. I heard you guys mentioning that. I, I think it's a good suggestion, uh, something to mm -hmm. have. So, Not all states it's legal in, though, so you really have to be careful uh, carrying the bear gel around because you can get just as much trouble for carrying that as somebody can for shooting at you, depending on the state. Um, anything else that we missed that people should be doing uh, to, to keep themselves safe out there and, and out of trouble? Well, you know, having a VO with you, I know that's not always an option for some budgets, but having a VO with you, even if it's your wife or husband or, you know, significant other or your buddy down the street uh, or your dog, for that matter, uh, you know, having that extra set of eyes, a set, extra set of ears is, is never a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. This is situational mm -hmm. awareness. We, we talk about this exactly. in the course, uh, you know, know mm -hmm. what's around you, who's around you and, and what's going on. So. Yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? One other one other quick thing I just thought of. Um, if you're flying a drone, you've got a camera in the air. So if you start to have an incident, turn that sucker around and bring it down low enough. Obviously, you won't hear anything, but you'll have a record right there of um, the incident from the air. What better position? You know, and if the cops show up and the guy says, I didn't do anything, you go, excuse me, take a look at my phone here. And yeah, so you've got instant, uh, instant uh, witness right there. Yep, and that's what Zach did in this case, in this mm -hmm. uh, story that we're talking about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Well, Vic, I really appreciate your time as always. Sure um, thing. You're always welcome to stop by, and, and thanks for uh, for helping us. Thanks for the invite, and thanks to the FAA for uh, giving me all that information yesterday on a quick turnaround time. Outstanding. Thanks, Vic. The last story this week is from Hotel again. We talked about Hotel a little bit earlier, but um, Hotel is coming out with a survey and you're going to say, oh, survey. Yeah, well, Hotel has been trying to do things differently. Uh, you may have watched the uh, interview that we did with their new CEO, Randall Warnas, and uh, Randall has been different than anybody else that we've really seen in the industry, at least at the manufacturing level. And, uh, and, and he's trying to do, I think, something really good with Hotel. And, um, and we're not affiliated with them. As you may know, we actually pitch a lot of DJI stuff as well. We've sometimes even been accused of being a little two-sided with DJI. So um, anyway, Hotel is trying to get some information from you guys as to what you want to see in a drone. This is your chance to tell a manufacturer what you want to see them build for you. So 
please go to the link down there. I, there's no money in it for us. There's nothing in it for us. I just want you to be able to express your opinion because this is something that I see all over different forums where people say, well, I wish DJI would do this. I wish Hotel would do this. Well, guess what? This is your chance to tell Hotel what you want from their product. So I think this is a great opportunity, not something that we've really seen before, that kind of level of detail. I haven't taken it myself. I did peruse through it pretty quickly, but I wanted to take the time to sit down and actually put some thought into it. But that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. So please go ahead and follow the link. It's going to be in the description and um, tell tell what you think. Good, bad. They want to hear it all, I'm sure. And, uh, and that, that's really it. So uh, click on the link down there. All right, the last thing this week is a quick Pilot Institute update. We just hit 20,000 followers on this YouTube channel. And based on the number of views that we get, I know there's a lot more of you that are not subscribed. So if you wanna subscribe, get the notification, hit that little subscribe button down there, and then, uh, then you'll get notifications every time that we put a new video out. Uh, we put out a bunch of recent videos on how high you can fly your drone. Uh, you know, the 400 foot rule is as simple as it may sound, it's actually pretty confusing. So we put a video out this week explaining the details on this. We have a video on trust and we also have a video on all the things that you need to do as a recreational flyer. So if you haven't seen these videos, make sure you look down in the comment section. Uh, we're gonna put the links down in there in the description. Um, we also hit 2 million views on YouTube uh, this week. So 20,000 subscribers and 2 million views, which is, we're a small channel, but uh, it is pretty good results for us. I'm excited about this. Uh, we're getting close to having 100,000 students. Now, this is not small. We're actually the largest drone training provider out there um, online at the moment. So we have uh, a little over 95,000. I'm expecting next month we'll be hitting 100,000 students. So... Tell us how you think we should celebrate. Who, what, what should the hundred thousandth students get if uh, if they join Pilot Institute? We also hit six thousand uh, students in our study hall, our Facebook study hall, which is an amazing community for our students to ask questions and interact with each other. And because of that, we actually just started a new Facebook group for photography and videography for our students to share their work, get tips get feedback from other people, and all of this in a great environment because, well, because this is what we provide. So I'm excited about these numbers. As always, like, subscribe, do everything you have. That's all I have for this week, and I'll see you guys next week.